I think the ultimate message for me is to just really be unapologetic. Um, no matter what it is you're sharing, whether it's your story or your, you know, voicing for a certain platform, it's just that if you believe in something and that's the truth to you, to, to just be bold and to, to be strong about it. My very first connection to hip hop was I was five years old. I think I was in kindergarten and you know those um, noontime variety shows that they have in Filipino programming and um, there was this artist named Francis Magalona and he, he, would, he would perform his song, I think it was like Mga Kababayan Ko um, from his album called Yo um, and I just remember like thinking as a little kid, you know, I, I didn't understand the substance or the stories that were in the lyrics but just hearing the flow and hearing the beats, I was like wow, you can use your voice as an instrument. And I was just completely captivated and blown away by that. And I gravitated towards that music. And I think it was only natural because I grew up in the Bay Area, East Bay, that, you know, where hip hop is such a big element of this, these neighborhoods, where I obviously got introduced to Pac, not soon after. Ice Cube, Snoop, you know, these are like all the West Coast legends that were coming up in the 90s. Eventually, I became introduced to um, the more lyrical rappers too, like hieroglyphics. and. I think just being in such a melting pot or beautiful community like the Bay Area where you hear hip hop in every corner that you, you turn, like you, you can cross the street and someone's going to be blasting um, like Mac Dre out of their speakers. And um, I think in that sense, I was just very fortunate that I didn't really have to go far to search for good music, um, specifically good hip hop music. It was just always there because of where I live. My dream collaboration has always been Lauryn Hill. Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is my favorite album of all time. And even if I could just do the intro to one of her songs, or even if she, um, like, we, sample, we could sample her voice for one of my future tracks, like, I would, I would be like, okay, I'm done. I quit. I'm retired. Peace. This is a good run. I, I say it over and over again, but I, I really honestly believe that, you know, Tagalog and um, Waray dialects are just very percussive um, dialects and sound so well. It's a perfect marriage with hip hop. And, um, but it wasn't until I made Circa 91 where I realized that, you know, maybe I shouldn't just do this for, you know, in the sonical sense, I should, it has to be purpose to it. And um, I realized that since I was creating an album that essentially was about an immigrant story, um, you know, you can't have an immigrant story without also including language in it. Growing up in the Bay Area and, you know, it's just a lot of um, first generation, second generation immigrant families and you can't step into a household without hearing, you know, the, the beautiful sounds of another language. And I think, um, I, I knew that I couldn't make my story as impactful if I didn't include um, my, my native tongue as well. I think the activism came out when I was doing my music. And I realized that as I was writing about topics that had significance to me and my community, um, I, I realized that, to be honest with you, I, I, I was never really too involved in my community until I became an artist. And now I feel like the, the two go hand in hand. Um, and it just makes sense too, because that is how, you know, hip hop became a genre or a culture of itself. You know, it, it, it came from people who were marginalized in the community and felt that they wanted to use music as a, as, as a tool to um, speak for the people who, didn't, who felt voiceless. I, I really, the intent was never to make an anthem. Uh, the intent was, you know, never to try to encompass like what's considered a Filipino-American immigrant story. Um, I was just sharing my story um, that I experienced growing up as well as my, my parents' story and tr trying to chronicle um, you know, their experiences as uh, first-generation immigrants. I think we live in a time right now in you know, society where oftentimes, especially not only just people of color, but immigrant people of color, like there are, our voices are silenced and oftentimes nowadays you know, kind of shunned um, from, the, from the main narrative. Outside of music, I, I've been working with um, Professor Allison Antintianco Cobales, and um, we have this thing called um, Penais Rising Scholarship, and it's something that we actually want to pursue and try to keep ongoing. Um, we we had our first batch of awardees um, just this just this past month. We we just. Um, awarded them their, their scholarships. So these are young women, young Penai specifically, 
who are trying to, or who are pursuing higher education, um, whether it be from high school or from call, from university level to getting, you know, their master's uh, program, um, and just. That's just one example of what I'm trying to do to bridge my music and making sure that it doesn't stop in the lyrics. Because at the end of the day, if I'm just here to, you know, rap these lyrics, to, to recite these poems, but I'm not being active or I'm not doing the things that I say that I want to do, then, um, you know, there's, there's really no point to them. Um, so I, I'm trying to still, you know, think about ways that I can integrate kind of like the themes that I talk about and how, how I can involve that in, in the community. Because I'd like to think that I haven't reached what I, I haven't accomplished what I want to accomplish yet. I feel like I'm still on the rise, I guess. Um, there's still so many things I want to do, and that's just with videos and music and um, even like in terms of merch and how I how I want to do shows. That's why I'm very excited for tonight because I'm able to show you know, a larger group of audience like what I'm trying to do to bring my, um, my, my live shows to the next level. Um, so I'm constantly thinking every night in, in my room, like what else can I do to elevate um, the way I write or the way I perform? Um, so I, I like to think that I'm still progressing as an artist. My album release show last October, um, it was when I saw people crying while I was performing. That's never happened to me before. and. Um, just seeing how much the lyrics have touched people, I guess, and how people are able to identify with, with the things that I talk about. Because um, I know, I, I mentioned um, Lauren Hill's Miseducation of yeah. Lauren Hill earlier. Like for me, growing up, um, I felt like I could relate so much and I could feel the pain and I could feel the beauty and the love and, and ev everything that she sang and that she rapped. And so the only thing I can hope for is to just even one percent, if I could do that to, to someone listening to my music, even just one percent of that feeling that she gave me, then I feel like that's the biggest reward and that would be my aha moment. I was kind of hesitant at first to perform my album. I was um, in the Philippines because uh, I had a show um, back in April. Um, I performed for the Malasimbo Festival in Puerto Galera. And I, I remember thinking before I got on stage, um, are the, is it, are the crowds going to be receptive to this? Because the experiences and the stories are very particular to you know what a Filipino American experience is, and um, I know even thinking of it in the you know in in, this, in the lens of a Filipino American, it's it's vastly vastly different um, from an experience from someone who grew up in Canada. Like it, it's going to be completely cha completely different. So I remember thinking like, are they even going to be able to relate to this? What are they going to think? Um, so I got on stage and. Um, I remember before I even got through my first song, um, there were these women in the front row, they were chanting, Ala Mama Rise! Ala Mama Rise! Ate, perform Ala Mama Rise! And I'm like, oh, y'all know this song? And it was just crazy to me that um, they might not, you know, have experienced the, the same things that I experienced growing up, but, you know, it's still, I think the themes in the album are still universal enough. I mean, so many people going through life, we all find a place to call home. We all share that similar struggle of, you know, trying to find out what our identity is, or even trying to balance two cultures at once. That's also a very universal thing growing up in the U.S. and around the world. What I tried to say in my album was basically that, you know, home is essentially where you find community. And I think that is easily translatable, you know, from the U.S. or from the Philippines, wherever you are. Straight up to the sky, way up.